All right, folks, uh, good morning. Let's go ahead and get airborne. We have a, a great day of uh, speakers lined up here. Very interesting times uh, in the markets, and this is, it's going to get a lot more interesting. Uh, remember, uh, at a 50,000 foot view, this week is a short week. The market is closed on Friday because we have the 4th of July uh, this weekend, and uh, it's going to get it's going to get sporty. We're going to talk about some of the issues that I see uh, on the radar short term, but then uh, the the crux of my presentation is going to be talking about what I call trading the Death Star. Uh, and if you're a, a Star Wars nerd like me and and my kids, you know the Death Star, Darth Vader. This thing was essentially taken over the universe. Uh, kind of thought it got blown up and was in trouble, uh, and it wasn't. Actually, got rebuilt and. Uh, you know, again, taking over uh, the universe. So real quick, uh, I'm not giving you any investment advice. I'm teaching uh, what I do at Top Gun Options is I train people how to uh, trade options and all about equity options and then hand them off to a registered investment advisor or broker dealer so they can uh, give you that tailored individual investment advice. Always remember trading options involves risk and past performance does not equate uh, with future uh, results. Okay. Uh, some quick disclosures. I'm, uh, I got some long Apple, short American Airlines, definitely long volatility here, and short uh, the S&P uh, 500. So those are in my personal account. And I think I got filled on some Lulu this morning, which I could not be more bearish on as the second wave hits. I think everybody already bought their overpriced yoga gear for the last time, uh, the first wave of COVID. And as we're getting ready to all be forced into lockdown again, uh, I don't think people are going to be buying a, another round of yoga clothes to sit inside for the next month. Matter of fact, they might actually have to buy another set of yoga clothes uh, because they don't fit anymore as we're all stuck here in lockdown. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Um, which, this is a, a A or B. I'm going to give you two choices, A or B. Which fighter aircraft would you rather fly? Okay, I'm going to give you two choices. There's choice A. Choice A is the F-4 Phantom. Okay, take a look at that cockpit, folks. Even if you don't know a lot about aviation, take a look at that cockpit and tell me, you know, what, what do you see? I mean, it's just, it's, it, it, my heart's racing right now looking at it. Look at that. There's over 300 switches and dials in that cockpit. As you can imagine, the pilot would spend a lot of what we call heads down time staring at all that stuff, which precludes him or her from doing what? Looking outside the cockpit, looking for air-to-air -air threats like enemy MiG aircraft, looking at the ground for surface-to-air missiles or AAA anti-aircraft artillery. So this was a very labor-intensive aircraft, okay? So that's choice A, or how about this one? There's choice B, <laughs> two flat panel displays. Now this is the F-35, the joint strike fighter. Anybody see any uh, steam gauges in there? Not one. There is not one steam gauge in the airplane. This jet, we call it the Wonder Woman jet. This jet is actually so smart that it limits the amount of information displayed to the pilot at different portions of the flight. The jet's smart enough to go, you know what, Sheer, he doesn't need to know that right now, so I'm just not going to tell him about it. Or they really need to know about this right now, and I'm going to put it right in their face. If you've ever seen a, a Joint Strike Fighter helmet, they kind of do look like Darth Vader. Everything's displayed up on their headset. As a matter of fact, there's so many sensors around the aircraft that when they look down, they actually don't like see their legs or, or, the, or like a cockpit. They see through the jet. So obviously, it's a rhetorical question. Even though you might be nostalgic and the F-4 looks pretty cool, you absolutely, in today's environment, that's the aircraft you want to fly, is the Joint Strike Fighter. Turn off all distractions. Make sure you silence that electronic nicotine because uh, Anka and David got a really good uh, day ahead, uh, and we're going to get started. Now, folks, you've never heard uh, what I'm about to tell you, or maybe you have, okay? So... This is going to be shocking to some of you, I guarantee it. But my promise by the end of the brief, I got to give you an up-to-date intelligence brief. Like I said, between now and 4th of July, I think something potentially very bad is going to happen. And you better have your sales trimmed appropriately for it. I don't care if the Dow's up 255 points right now. You, gotta, you better have one hand on the ejection seat handle. Uh, I'm going to show you the, you ready for this? The only, only stock you need to own for the rest of your life. 
you're nuts. No, I'm not. And I'm going to show you a good substitute to trade in case you can't trade this stock. And I'll tell you why you might not be able to trade. You can definitely trade it using options, but I'm going to show you a good substitute. Ladies and gentlemen, real quick, my name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign is Wiz. I earned that call sign flying the FA-18 Hornet for the United States Navy for about 15 years. I graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School, which many of you know is Top Gun, and I was an adversary pilot. And so I was a, what you could say, a good bad guy. <laughs> so I fought the good guys as a bad guy. I flew jets that were painted like enemy MiGs. I flew enemy tactics. I had to be more fluent in the enemy's tactics than our own, technically. And I had an absolute uh, blast. What's that have to do with trading? Uh, everything. As a young fighter pilot, 20, well, I, I'm going to age myself, you know, <laughs> when I first got commissioned and went into the Navy, uh, I remember buying my first mutual fund uh, when I was stationed down at Naval Air Station Key West, right through USAA. Uh, and then I started applying everything that I was learning in a fighter aircraft. Because when you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, trading is a form of combat, right? Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to get their rear end handed to them. Which one of those do you want to be? So I just started applying everything, having a strategy, implementing tactics, uh, being disciplined, managing risk. How about contingency planning? Figuring out what could go wrong in a trade before I got in it, folks. The time for me to decide what I was going to do if I got shot at by a surface-to-air missile over Iraq was not when that happened. I sat in the air conditioning on an aircraft carrier, sipping on my Diet Coke, going, here's what I'm going to do. And many of you don't do any of this in your trading, and that's why you struggle. I guarantee you. So here you go. Here's what I'm going to hit you with, and this is going to leave a mark. Because Wall Street, ladies and gentlemen, has been lying to you. Now, that might be shocking and might not be shocking. I, I, well, it's, I, it, it is and it isn't. Maybe I'll, I'll put it at that. Anybody ever hear the Wall Street-ism uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to diversify, right? Diversification, you have to diversify in your vesting. If you're not diversified, you're gonna get what blah, 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 blah. It's absolute bull. Now that's kind of shocking to many of you, right? First day of investing, first day of investing 101. Every investing book that you've ever read, the first page, the first statement said you gotta diversify. It's a lie. You know why they've wanted you to diversify over the years, ladies and gentlemen? Because they're stealing from you. Well, I, I'm not going to use the word stealing, but guess what? Commissions. Months ago, I was cleaning out the garage. I found like my old, literally, for, uh, uh, old folder full of like trade receipts. I actually had carbon copies, right, of, a, of an order ticket from back USAA. I think I was buying shares of... Uh, after I was doing mutual funds, I'm like, why am I paying a mutual fund when I can pick my stocks? My wife, I think at the time, kept Aaron Taylor in business and I paid the American Express bill. Uh, but the commission was like more than the shares that I bought. It was like 250 bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, you ever see the movie like The Wolf of Wall Street or Boiler Room or actually the movie Wall Street? Hey, boys, pick up the phones. Let's start calling the little old ladies in tennis shoes and get them into this stock or get them into that stock. Let's churn the accounts. Every time they use the word churn, you might as well replace it with the word cha-ching. Folks, they want you in a bunch of different names and trading and everything like that. That's how mama gets a new pair of shoes, and it's wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, diversification is for people who don't know what they're doing. Now that's the whiz way of saying it. How about Warren Buffett's way of saying it? Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. I want that to sink in, folks. Let that sink in. If you don't know what you're doing, it makes sense for you to diversify. It's stupid, in my opinion. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the only stock you ever need to own again for the rest of your life. It's diversified, folks. It's, it's, it's literally the Death Star. It's taking over the world. 
Full disclosure, I flied for Fed. I, I was a pilot for FedEx for about 10 months. I hated it, man. I was in my young 30s, just off active duty in the Navy. I was still flying the F-18 for the Navy Reserve. But flying for FedEx, 33 years old, I was miserable flying at night, you know, showing up to work at midnight and trying to land at 7 a.m. before the sun came up to sleep during the day at, an air, at a hotel. Didn't know. Not, not for me. But anyway, here's one. A couple of five, six years ago, a buddy of mine who was in a FedEx corporate, he's like, dude, I, I, I just heard from a buddy at GE aircraft leasing or whatever the company was. He's like, Amazon just, just leased five Airbus. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's going to do it. He's going to make his own FedEx UPS. And he did Amazon Air. Look at all the blue trucks you see out on the streets. Amazon Web Services, ladies and gentlemen, AWS, is essentially Microsoft. They're in space. They're in food. Did you see a month or two ago, they filed for patent protection of Amazon Pharmacy. You're going to get everything you ever buy again from here, essentially. Talk about diversification, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? Men lie. Numbers don't. Look at the numbers. <laughs> Look at, look at their average annual revenue. Anybody see a trend? Now, I'm a political science major and, you know, a knuckle-dragging fighter pilot, so I, I think I see a trend there. Now, before I, I, I really pump this up even more, we got to talk about the threats. Before I go on any mission or look at any trade, what's going to knock me down out of the sky? What are the risks of trading just a single name? Well, let's go through it. Anybody remember a, a firm called Lehman Brothers? How about Bear Stearns? Yeah. Oh, you know, who, you know who knows Bear Stearns really well? Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, at the height of the financial crisis, he, he looked like Khrushchev at the UN, like pounding his shoe on the table. If you don't buy Bear Stearns at $70, you're an idiot. It's a steal. Two days later, it was at zero. Good call, Jimmy. Anybody remember Pets.com, Enron? Folks, I could sit here for the next hour and go through the graveyard of stocks that have gone to zero. There's a lot. But based on the examples I just gave you, does anybody see any common commonality between those, those names I just gave you? I'll answer it for you. They didn't own a thing. What? Folks, think about it. Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. They didn't own, and it looks like they didn't even own the sign over the building. They didn't own a thing. They owned paper, right? It was trades. It was, it was air. They owned paper and not even paper. It was, it was just electronic. And then when there was a run on their positions, they got pounded into the dirt. What did Pets.com own? It owned a dirty sock and a URL. <laughs> what did Enron own? Nothing. Enron was one of the biggest scams known to man. It was a middleman of electricity. Hell, they, did, they didn't even own the building they were in. So the common thread between most stocks that go to zero is they don't own anything. Amazon, uh, I used to do, uh, I did a consulting gig, what, about five years ago down in Miami. It was an Amazon fulfillment center. The place was as big as an aircraft carrier. Amazon owns stuff. And it's owning more stuff as the days go by. What's another potential threat? That dude. Well, I'm going to say not really. Why? Well, a year, eh, two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago, I remember Donald Trump waking up or maybe not even waking up. The guy doesn't sleep, apparently, grabbing his phone and tweeting like a madman about how Jeff Bezos and Amazon are sticking it to the post office and they're going to make them go out of business and blah, you know. Unbelievable. Somebody needs to do something about this. I love when the guy tweets, somebody needs to do something about something. I'm like, oh my God, if only there was somebody in charge of this country. Anyway, so the, the stock took a little hit at the time and then it shrugged it off like it should have initially. But there is, there are some regulatory issues out there maybe. Uh, you know, uh, Amazon is definitely up on the hill to be targeted, but not as bad as who, right? Now, so in the Navy, <laughs> we called it the junior officer law of thermodynamics. If the heat ain't on you, it's on somebody else. So 
if you're Facebook and Twitter and Google, you're in a lot of trouble going into this election uh, because clearly I'm on my fourth Twitter account uh, and I'm in Facebook jail for 30 days. So when they shut down guys like me, you know, it, it, they're full of it. Anyway, but Amazon, folks, if you're sitting here looking at it like, wow, these are some potential uh, threats to, uh, uh, to, to Amazon. Well, not really, folks. Okay, uh, and I, I like to say that I wear two suits at Top Gun Options. I wear a flight suit. I'm going to tell you how I feel as an American. And then I'm going to throw on my $10,000 Armani suit and tell you how I feel as Gordon Gecko. As an American, Amazon's a behemoth. It's t it, the best thing, and this will sound like Gordon Gecko, the best thing that ever happened to Amazon was a pandemic. Why? Because mom and pop, you know, little uh, stores are essentially gone out of business for the past three months amazon walmart target they were all allowed to open but the little guy at the, you know in a small town that owned a hardware store is gone destroyed by amazon to talk about the death star right so and if you're sitting here going well was there's regulatory issues right it sounds like amazon's a monopoly those are illegal in this country, right? Well, guess what? They've made business more efficient. They have, first of all, Jeff Bezos has, I think he loans money to God. Jeff Bezos has enough money to tie anything up in court for the rest of the millennium. It's not going to happen. And if you do look at the history of Uncle Sam coming in and going, we think you're a monopoly, how long does that take? Let alone the, the company fighting it, it takes forever. Remember the Microsoft stuff? I think it was like five, 10 years. IBM, the, the baby bells, standard oil. Folks, when, when Uncle Sam comes in, when the FTC comes in and says, we think you're too big, hit a stopwatch and then grab a calendar. Grab a year calendar because it would be years. So I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't brief you on these threats, but they're pretty damn sure the, the, the benefits of trading just Amazon clearly outweigh the risks. It ain't going to zero, folks. It could, and it would be a nuclear war. I mean, just Amazon's not going to zero. It's physically impossible. When you own things, things have value, okay? Now, what are the benefits to just trading one name to a solo stock? Folks, you trade that same name, and you potentially profit no matter what direction Amazon moves. It can go up, it can go down, it can go sideways. As an options trader, I can make money if a stock or an ETF or an index trades sideways, clearly. That's what I love about options. You stay focused on the news and, and the information, the events that impact Amazon. Instead of a ton of different stocks and ETFs, you become an expert in Amazon, reducing time spent on other positions. I have a buddy who is an Apple market maker. I'm not joking when I say he doesn't even know a stock market exists. The dude doesn't care. He doesn't know what the VIX is, the S&P 5. He doesn't care about anything other than what? Apple. He lives, eats, breathes, sleeps Apple. I'm not kidding. The dude doesn't, what, what are you talking about? What's the S&P 500? What's going on in Macworld? What's going on at the WWC, the Worldwide Developers Club, blah, 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 blah. He doesn't care. Now, I, I use this uh, as a good example, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have a doctor buddy down here in South Florida. Great dude. He's an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, and, you know, hey, Wiz, I need help. Can you help me figure out this trading and stuff like that? You got it, Doc. This was before we were all thrown in prison by the government against the Constitution. But anyway, I met him at Starbucks. Sat down. Hey, Doc, good to see you. All right, Wiz, let me show you what I got. I'll never forget him booting up his laptop, logging in, sliding the laptop around and facing the screen towards me. Thank God he was a doctor because I had a heart attack. This man who spends eight, 12 hour days in surgery or office hours or whatever, had 33 positions. I'm not joking, he had 33 positions. He tried to go through them. I think this one is a, hmm. No, I think that's a pot stock, I'm not sure. Anyway, but this one, oh God, I don't, I forget when I got into it. 
it's losing a ton. I'll just get out of it whenever it comes back. I'm like, that dude, stop talking. Doc, stop talking. I don't want stop. You're killing me. 33 positions. Folks, I do this for a living. And five to 10 positions is too many. 33? I want you to ask yourself, is this your trading cockpit? It needs to be that, folks. This is nice, focusing on just what you have to focus on and what is important. Not that. This is insanity. And a lot of you have problems as retail traders because you're doing this, right? So if you're sitting here going, man, this, this resonates with me, I get it, harumph, but I still, it freaks me out, man, just trading one name. There's your solution. If you're still sitting there, if I couldn't shake that, you must diversify ch chip that they implanted in your, in your neck in investing school. Here's your diversification, XLY. Do you know what XLY is? It's the consumer discretionary ETF. Anybody know what the number one holding of XLY is? You probably guessed it already. It's Amazon. The top holding in the XLY ETF is Amazon. 25, 26% of the XLY is Amazon stock. Now, you want diversification? Take a look on the screen. What else is in the XLY? Home Depot, McDonald's, Nike, Starbucks, Lowe's, Bookings, TJX, Target, GM. There, ladies and gentlemen, is your diversification if you're just creeped out. It's a good substitute for XLY. It's not perfect. There's been days when Amazon's going through the roof and the XLY's flat or getting hammered. Why? Well, how about Nike last week with surprise, really bad earnings? Huh. Shocker. I wasn't shocked. Anyway, so there is your diversification. So how do we target Amazon and XLY for max profit? Well, this is awesome. But we're not going to do this. Check this out. Step one, during normal times, and we are not living in normal times, folks. This is, but here's what we used to do, and we'll talk through this in a second, why I'm, I'm not talking like this. But we used to fly, we, we jump in that joint strike fighter, fly out to the future a year, two years from now, and using options, you can do that. We flew out into the future and would establish a base position with a long-term bullish options position. Whether it was, there's two tactics I'll teach you, synthetic stock or long call diagonal. Just depends on a couple things that I'll teach you. Look in parentheses though. What's Uncle Wiz always have? Some protection on. You see that F-18 on the top right of that slide? That's actually me. Um, I never went flying on a mission and said, hey, chief, the maintenance chief, right? Crusty old maintenance chief who was sailing on a wooden ship when I was playing soccer as an eight-year-old. Hey, chief. Yeah, what's up, lieutenant? Do me a favor and pull out the ejection seat. I, I, I'm not going to die today. Just, I'd rather have extra gas. The dude probably would have strangled me. So no, we will always have some protection on. I sleep better at night, man, with this stuff. Anyway, so we would, the first step usually would be to fly out into the future and get bullish. You can write this down right now, right here. Amazon, by my birthday, subtle plug, is December 31st. I am a New Year's baby. Amazon, by Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve, my birthday, will be a $3,000 stock, period, if not more. All right, so we establish our base position, and then what do we do? We also trade what I call the front months. What's the front month? You're sitting in the front month, June, July, August. Amazon's going up. Okay, let's trade some bullish spreads or buy some long calls. Uh-oh, Amazon's going down. It ain't going to be down for long, but let's do some bear spreads or sell some front month calls. Amazon's just not doing anything. It's moving sideways. Great. We'll do an iron condor. Now, if you don't know what any of those words mean, don't worry about it because at Top Gun Options, I'm here to train you. I'm not here to educate you. 
to steal part of a Calvin Coolidge quote, the world is full of educated derelicts. Training gives you a skill. Fighter pilots are trained. Doctors are trained. Plumbers are trained, right? Options traders are trained. So I'll, t I'll, I'll educate you. <laughs> I will train you into what these things are. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring up my brokerage platform. Where are we? E-Trade, E-Trade, Power Trade. Okay, share that one. So let's take a look at Amazon stock. Man, this thing, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, look at the three month chart of Amazon. And the E-Trade charts lately have been hiccuping and I don't like it, three months. Look at the three month chart of Amazon. What COVID? Amazon is up 42% in three months. Well, it had to take a hit in the COVID crash. I just told you that the COVID crash was the best thing that ever happened to Amazon. Here's, here's a great earnings report. Eh, we're kind of moving sideways and going in earnings. Let's see how earnings are. Holy shnikes. The, I remember that earnings. It was three ago, but I'll never forget it. It was essentially every January, folks, it kind of levels off waiting for the how'd we do over Christmas or the holidays earnings report. Oh my God, we bought Christmas, Kwanzaa, winter solstice, and Hanukkah. Boom! And that's when mid-February happened this year. But look at their COVID crash. It kind of crashed, but just kind of below where they went into earnings. So let's take a look at how Amazon's performed from the bottom of the COVID crash to right now. 60 five percent now let me alleviate some of you who go like this like ah oh, well i missed it you missed what jeff bezos has said never in his tenure as ceo will he cut the stock or, or split the stock or this is what i love amazon even more about he will never pay a dividend oh that's not good that's fantastic if you're a person looking, go buy Apple if you want a little dividend or go buy a utility company. Jeff Bezos looks at his investors and says, if I give one penny back to you, I failed. Well, that's weird. No, it isn't. The dude will take that penny and go do something with it. <laughs> buy a whole food, buy a this, invest it in satellites. He's insane, but he's, he's right. I love his attitude as a CEO. I will never return money back to the shareholders because I will use it to build another Death Star. You have to be bullish on a dude who thinks like that. Okay? Absolutely love Amazon. Now, let me bring up, I want to make sure you guys can see. Let me bring this up. Let me make sure you guys are seeing my screen right here. Let me bring this one up. Okay. Everybody sees the chart of the S&P 500, okay? This is, we've had a monster run. Remember, there's a Wall Street-ism that says markets take the uh, escalator up and they take the, you know, elevator down. Hell, we didn't take the elevator down. We took the window. But look at this. We've taken another escalator up. I am, I, folks, and I'll, I'll you can, You'll have access to these webinars when you become a member. I predicted that to the day. I predicted this within two days. Right there, I said, you have got to get in half cash. You have got to buy puts on the S&P 500 long volatility. The government's lying to us. This thing from China. I, I got buddy, folks, I got, a, I got friends in the Pentagon. I got friends on the Hill. I have a great network of people. And guess what? We predicted, we nailed this. We literally made millionaires at Top Gun Options. Little old ladies in tennis shoes. I got three of them. They, they'll, they'll tell you all about it. Now, I predicted, now let's talk about, well, it's not bad. Here's what I did. I predicted a W. I said, we're going to implode. We're going to get a dead bat bounce, not a dead cat. It's a bat. It came from China. I said a W. And I was going to be right, right until right there. And I'll never forget this. It was a weekly, it was a Thursday morning. I'm in a live trade brief. 
weekly op or I'm sorry, weekly unemployment claims, 6 million. I'm like, oh man, we're going lower. I nailed the W. I was wrong. Why? Because within 0 0.02 seconds of that weekly jobs uh, number coming out, the Federal Reserve dropped one of the biggest fiscal nukes it, known to man. And in the blink of an eye, folks, I can go from being, we're going to W bearish, this thing's going to hell in a handbasket, to that's it, smoke the Fed hopium, they're going to do whatever it takes to save the market. And we were right. Here's the funny part of this. The, the smart money, Leon Cooperman, legendary investor, Kyle Bass, Jeffrey Gunlock, all got it wrong. How many of you on the way down saw these dudes or ladies on CNBC going, oh, I'd buy the dip here. I definitely, here's the bottom. Buy the dip. No, I'm adding here. Nope, there. First of all, they're lying because they were out of money if they did buy the whatever down. They were destroyed. None of them got that right. And here's the funnier part about the smart money. What have they said on the way up? They didn't believe this rally. Jeffrey Gunlock runs Double Line Capital, a $150 billion hedge fund. April 27th, why do I remember that? That's my beautiful bride's birthday. April 27th, he said, Jeffrey Gunlock said, I'm done being in cash. I am shorting the market. We will retest the March lows. Jeffrey Gunlock believed that was going to happen. What did happen to Jeffrey Gunlock? Well, he's still kind of in business, but if he was still short to this, he got wiped out. Why am I rambling about all these guys? Because they're the, quote, smart money. I went from being a little old lowly retail trader to essentially helping run a $2.5 billion vol arb firm in the board of trade. I went from being... I was Eddie Murphy in trading places, folks. I was Valentine. <laughs> I went from being on the street up to the corner office. And I know that they're not the smart money. I've been in the boardrooms. I've been in the trade briefs. And I've looked around and gone, uh, wow, you actually don't know what you're doing or you aren't the smart money. Okay. Now, uh, what time is that? I want to make sure I keep these guys on time. Hey, um, Anka or David, what time do you want me to go to? If you uh, guys 55 after. Yeah. Oh, 55. Uh, another Perfect. 20 minutes. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, David. All right, folks. So what did I say? I said, usually we would fly into the future and get bullish on Amazon. I what do we got coming, folks? We got Nov, December. We got, in no, we got a day in November where we all sit around and hold hands and break bread and thank God for how blessed we are. And then the next day we're out beating each other up to save 10 bucks on a flat screen, right? So we usually get what is called a Santa Claus rally. I have it in my smartphone, folks. It's a repeating calendar reminder. It has no end. Not that I'm immortal, but I just need to know that every November 1st, I buy me some Amazon. I buy some calls and it's, it's like clockwork. It's almost like cheating. I'm not this year. This, I've been trading Amazon, I, I can't even remember. 15 years, however long Amazon's been around, I've been trading this stock. This is the first year in the history of me trading Amazon, I am not getting bullish out to November and December. Why? I'm gonna give you an acronym, D-R-I-N-C. Drink. It's a little early on a Monday for that, but I'm going to give you this acronym. This acronym, ladies and gentlemen, is a wall between where we are today and out into the future. In case you didn't notice, you might have missed this, we're in an election year. I have never seen the country in this condition. We've had COVID, we've had race riots, and between now and November, what's election day? November 4th, whatever the date is. And the first week in November, you see that wall? That wall is Democrats, Russia, Iran, North Korea, China. Each one of those letters, either independently or in concert, or in concert and not knowing they're in concert, are going to do whatever it takes to make sure 
Donald Trump is not reelected. Re you might be sitting here like, I came for a trade brief, not a political brief. If you're not trading politics, you're a fool. <laughs> Look, it's, for the past year and a half, I've, we printed money on the trade negotiations, which are politics, folks, global politics. So I don't, I'm not going to sit here and get into a super deep political discussion. This is a fact. If you think COVID, and here comes COVID too, right? The second wave. We're doing more tests and mortality rates going down. It doesn't matter. There's more cases. You said there'd be more cases two months ago. You wanted more testing. You said the cases would go up. The mortality rate's gone down. Doesn't matter. Close everything again. I'm down here in South Florida. They just reclosed Miami. I have best friends who own restaurants in Fort Lauderdale that are going bankrupt. Their lives are being destroyed by a flu that has a 0 .04 fatality rate for people under 70. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care your political persuasions. You just need to know if you're here to learn about trading and investing that you, nobody I know, no broker I know, lets you trade off the left side of a chart. How many of you can trade off the left side of a chart? So I love people that do technical analysis. Well, this looks like a reverse. Oh, did you, did, t did technical analysis predict that? Did technical analysis predict that? No, we used to burn witches too. You can't trade off the left side of a chart. You know what you have to trade on? The right side of the chart. And the right side of the chart, ladies and gentlemen, right now could not be more foggy. Between, oh, this is what I wanted to talk about. Between now and does everybody know that in 1999, I forget the name of the holiday. Every time I say this, I'm like, I write down a little note, like find out the name. I don't know. North Korea made July 3rd, some whatever it is, the People's Liberation Army, whatever, bottle rocket day. They did it right in front of our July 4th. I got a lot, a lot of buddies still wearing uniforms with stars that believe that there will be some sort of either underground nuke test a ballistic missile or a bottle rocket launch, another one over Japan. He hasn't done it in a long time, but he's getting ready for a temper tantrum. In the past, what's happened when he's done this? American presidents throw cash at him and give him food. Trump hasn't. So his creepy sister right now, they blew up their embassy or that North Korean kind of love building where the South Koreans met and the, North, the South Koreans left in January because it was getting ugly. They blew it up two weeks ago. Last week, they've moved a record amount of forces closer to the DMZ. Did you know this? Or are you just focusing on statues? Just because some, you're not being briefed on something doesn't mean it's not happening, folks. Just because the media aren't paying attention to Iran doesn't mean they're still not building a nuclear weapon two miles underground. It's happening. So you have to be ready for these events, especially when we implode, we kind of do this, and we're just hanging. Me, ladies and gentlemen, I could not have been more bullish on the way up and proved the smart money wrong because of Jerome Powell. I don't think ever in my lifetime have I seen a Fed chief on 60 Minutes. Four weeks ago, Jerome Powell was on 60 Minutes, and what did he say? I print money that the Fed folks just, we, we just print money digitally. And then if, you know, we actually print physical money and we, we send it out to Federal Reserve Banks. The dude more or less said, unless I run out of ink or my laptop battery dies, I'm going to print as much money as physically possible to keep this thing up. So for the past two and a half, three months since the Fed dropped that nuke, and I had like two or three losing trades down here, folks. I had my W going. The second they dropped that nuke, I said, done, bullish. And we printed money on the way up. So I took a couple losses there because I was like, I did not expect the Fed to literally jump. He didn't jump in with both feet. He jumped in with the Fed, like the entire Fed jumped into a pool. But so I could not have been more bullish on the way up. And I kind of use this funny analogy. I feel like old Red sitting on the front porch in Kansas. When my knees start hurting, there's a storm coming. I'm going to tell you right now, my knees, my neck, my hands, my, my entire body is hurting right now. I believe 
whether it's the drink, D-R-I-N-C in the future, or just the market runs out of steam, we are heading lower. The only person uh, that really, not per, only per, Donald Trump needs his market higher to win, re have any chance of winning re-election. But the people, the acronym I just drew up here will not let that happen. So that was a lot of rambling to tell you that the first time I'm not going to fly over that wall to November or December. You know when I will? Think about getting long-term bullish on Amazon again after the election, which is when mysteriously COVID will disappear. Okay, so, but what can we do in the interim? We can trade the heck out of the front months. Let me tell you what we've been doing uh, with Amazon. And, I, and actually I have my solo Amazon brief today. It's every Monday at two o'clock. We've been doing front month bull put spreads. Last week we did an Amazon bull put spread, the 2650, 2645, max profit. The week before that, another max profit. Look, yeah, this fantastic. We've been printing money just trading bull put spreads on Amazon for the past uh, couple weeks. This one hit a max profit, two grand in four days. I don't, knock on, yeah, I'm going to jinx myself. Knock on wood, we haven't had a, a losing trade on Amazon in months. Just trading bullish spreads on Amazon. It, it, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Now, Amazon had a little bit of an uh, implosion today, but maybe let's, let me take a look at the clock here. Uh, uh, uh. Well, let me go over to Amazon real quick. I, I, I hate like forcing a trade on you, but uh, you know, a little, little run out of airspeed. A out of all the names, folks, Amazon, if there is going to be a between, I don't think it'll be tr during the week. I think North Korea lights off a bottle rocket. Um, I don't think it's during our trading week. I, I could be wrong, but I think on the third or fourth, North Korea does something. Remember the market's closed uh, on the third. Okay. So, uh, you got to be careful. Well, look at me. Here's my, per this is my personal account, folks. I have puts on, uh, I bought uh, uh, disaster puts on the Russell and the S&P 500 right now. I am ready for, uh, especially out the Friday, I have puts on the S&P 500 at the Friday and out to July 10th. I actually covered the 4th of July. Look at these puts right now. Oh my God, they're down seven grand. No, they're not. Yeah, th they are. They're down seven. No, they're not, folks. If you have puts on and you think of them as losing money, you're doing it wrong. My bias right now, ladies and gentlemen, is to the downside. Did, did you not see the chart of the S&P 500, man? We're running out of steam. What's the bullish case? Somebody tell me why you're bullish right now. The only reason I've been bullish <clears throat> up until this point, and it, it, it's, it's bizarro bullish, meaning – you're bullish. Uh, there's people dying. <clears throat> Companies are closing. Uh, Iran, North Korea, Russia, China, the phase one trade deal might be gone. And yeah, how can you be? It's called the Fed. I, ladies and gentlemen, believe the market has fed fatigue. Period. The Fed is, every time I say they're out of ammo, they, he, they prove me wrong. Folks, it came out last week that they're buying corporate bonds. They're buying bonds in like I, what Bloomberg said, Walmart, like they're buying bonds in names of big companies, billion dollar companies. The Fed is buying their bonds. So I just caught myself every time that I think that the, the Fed is out of ammo, they, they're one step away, ladies and gentlemen, from buying stocks. But here's my point. Me, I feel it. I've been doing this for 28 years. I've been trading. And right now, I absolutely feel that that has come to it. The market has had enough hopium. The market's drunk, the sun's coming up, and we're ready for down. Why am I showing you this slide? Because this is an overall risk slide. If the market goes down 5%, my portfolio goes up about 39 grand. If we get a 10% pullback, I'm looking at six figures. My, what if it goes up 5%? I'll lose about 15. My slant, my bias is this way. I'm telling you, I feel it. Okay, so that's what I, I really wanted to share to you. I, I, I'm going to introduce you to our solo Amazon service. Like I said, at two o'clock today, we actually have a live trade brief. And let's go back to Amazon real quick. It, it's getting off the mat today, but even that's starting to have a, a little bit of a not fresh appeal to it. I mean, there's your open implosion and kind of up. 
Let's look at this real quick. Let's take a look at XLY since that's the good substitute. Yeah, I mean, good, good run, pullback, good. Now, look at this. If we break here, man, we break this like one where we, if we kind of break where we are, it's look out below. Okay, I'd actually probably be doing a bear call spread on uh, XLY today. That's probably what we're going to do in a couple minutes. We're going to, uh, or a couple minutes at uh, this afternoon. But I, I, we're, I'm, I, I went a little long-winded, and I apologize for that. But I, I'm very passionate about what I do. Uh, so let me, let's actually, let me get you guys on board with what we can do uh, to get you on board with what we do. Let me go down to here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Right here. All right. Because uh, I want to keep these guys on time, on target, on time. So Solo Amazon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is our newest live trading service. Even though we just trade Amazon in there, I would give you in the brief everything I just kind of gave you. We don't jump into a Solo Amazon brief and just go, hey, let's talk Amazon. You have got to – anybody remember what happened to your portfolio during the Greek debt crisis? Why is my 401k a 201k? Where's Greece and what is a debt – how about when Putin invaded Crimea? or Eastern Ukraine. Folks, you have got to know what's going on. Uh, and I'll give you that brief. I, I give you an up-to-date, here's what's going on in the world. Now, our other live trade briefs, I do four of them throughout the week, are $167 a month, but solo Amazon, since, you ready for this? We just trade Amazon, <laughs> is only $97 a month, okay? I'm meeting some buddies tonight in Fort Lauderdale, uh, some hedge fund buddies, an institutional guy, I guarantee you I'll buy a round of drinks. It's going to be more than 97 bucks. So for essentially more than a round of drinks or less than a round of drinks, you can get into our newest service here, Top Gun Options, called Solo uh, Amazon. There's the link, topgunoptions.com slash solo dash Amazon dash monthly. Okay. And, uh, and they put it right there in the chat box for me on time. We've been print, we've done fantastic uh, year to date. We're up over six figures in Amazon. I took a hit on XLY. That was at the bottom. That was consumer. This is perfect. I love covering losses because if you ever come to one of these things and the lady or the dude's like, all we have is winning trades, run as fast as you can. Uh, I will admit where I, I got it wrong at the bottom, man. I, I went W and here comes Jerome Powell with no whiz. It ain't a W. <laughs> it's it's the other thing. So I, I we learned from our losses, man. I learned to never underestimate the Fed. I learned in the blink of an eye, the quote smart money this whole past two three months as we've rallied has sat there with their arms crossed, going "Harumph, this isn't a rally. It shouldn't be doing this." You trade the market you have, not the one you want. Genius, Wiz. I work Mondays at two. Well, 80% of our folks work. I send out a, a text and email alert whenever I look at a new uh, position. There's a screenshot of, a, of an XLY bear call spread that I sent out. And at the same exact instant, we fire out an email alert. So not only do you get a text message with just kind of the, the text of the trade, you get an email that shows you the, uh, the, there's the order ticket, there's the max risk in the trade, there's the max this. The, it, it, this is awesome. I love this stuff. And guess what happens? 30 minutes after the brief, the replay is posted. So you go home, kids go to bed, get something to eat, go watch the replay. Watch it over the weekend, right? If you can't attend, watch the replay. Today, I'm also going to throw in our proprietary materials, our primary, intermediate, and advanced workbook. These are your these are the building blocks, man. This is so if you need a little brush up on options or or you're new to options. Bury your face in these things, man. Primary, this is a call. This is a put. This is volatility. These are options. Intermediate, spreads, advanced, iron condors, and directional plays, and synthetic stock. Now, for all the political science majors out there, let me help you out. The service is 97 bucks a month. If you went to my website right now to buy these manuals, they'd be 197 So I'm going to wait a second as you do the math. Exactly. You just made a hundred bucks. You're saving a hundred bucks. You're getting the, these are yours to keep, man. These are 197 bucks. The service is 97. It's a no brainer folks. Here's what you get access to our every Monday brief at two o'clock text and email alerts 
and our three skill-based manuals. And you also get access to what we call the Ready Room. That's our interactive forum on the website where you, you can talk with fellow members, you can talk with me, have any questions, concerns, oh, by the ways, uh, it's, it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great, uh, great, great sir, uh, addition there. Uh, Parmar, 200 grand, 20 Amazon contracts. Kevin, Amazon synthetic st stock, late to enter, up 200%. Paid eight grand, now 24. Greg was up 144 grand on two long term bullish Amazon positions, man. It did, the dude just look at his last sentence. I don't need much more. That's a smart man right there. David, did Amazon TGO, Topkin Options, synthetic stock two months ago, up 42 uh, grand? Diane, even with Amazon being expensive, one contract, ladies and gentlemen, is huge. She did 70 grand with one contract. So great stuff. That one's a little long, um, but solo Amazon folks, it's uh, $97 a month. I'll tell you what, if you do a, uh, today, if you do a uh, annual membership, I'll give you a 25% uh, percent discount. Let me do that. Let me, let me go to, um, let me pull up the uh, page here. Yeah, let's do that. Topkinoptions.com slash solo uh, annual. That's an easy one to remember. Let me help you out here with the uh, with the URL for that one. So the, the the regular monthly ones in the chat box, and then here, let me give you, if you want a 25% discount, I'll hook you up with that today. So I solo uh, annual. That's easy to remember. It's slash solo annual. There we go. It is right here. So there you go, folks. Uh, Topkinoptions.com slash solo uh, annual is a 25% uh, discount. Okay. So 25% discount, you get the manuals uh, as well. And then you can also obviously do the month give the month, just to try it out for a month. I mean, that's, you know, dip your toe in the water. Uh, like I said, I, I, I'm a, I'm, I'm sometimes a 1942 guy. I like sipping tequila. My God, last time I was in Fort Lauderdale, I think it was like 57 bucks for like, uh, yeah, that was a little, that's a little much. Um, so essentially for almost a glass of <laughs> tequila in, in Fort Lauderdale, Top Gun, uh, solo, dash Amazon, dash monthly. There you go. So here's the monthly one, topkinoptions.com slash solo, dash Amazon, uh, dash monthly. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, if, if you don't, uh, if uh, hopefully you enjoyed or got something out of it today, here's what I really, really super hope your takeaway is. You have got to be hedged and ready for what's coming, man. If you think between now and election day, things are just going to be super fun, fantastic unicorns and lollipops and rainbows. You're crazy. You're nuts. I'm hearing from Republican operatives that they're getting ready to drop their own bombs. I think, uh, what's his name? The uh, U S attorney Durham, I think Comey, Brennan, Clapper, Strozik, and Page might be wearing bracelets before the election. What if the Justice Department, uh, right in front of an election, that sounds familiar, uh, ends up arresting a bunch of former people for treason? You want to talk about some volatility in the market, man? It's, it's coming. This, if it doesn't, I'll be happy, folks. Now, let me put my flight suit on. If the world doesn't go to hell in a handbasket more soon, I'm going to smile and be like, Phew. I love being wrong about stuff like that, folks. I, I, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll stand on my roof and go, I was wrong because that means good things happen. And if I'm right, I'm going to print money, but I usually don't stand on my rooftop and go, I, I was right because usually bad happens. But as bad happens, I can also print money. Ladies and gentlemen, 1055 on the dot. With uh, Anka and Dave, I like to put it through the bullseye, on time, on target. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to have a great rest of your day. I saw the lineup of speakers, and when I'm not doing my brief at two, I'm going to be sneaking in back in here to learn some stuff because there are some smart 500-pound uh, heads talking today, okay? So, David, Anka, always a pleasure working with you two professionals, and, uh, and I look, to, look forward to working with you guys again soon.